Hello, everyone. Welcome to our show today called NG Ingwen. My name is John Drummond or Yang Haoen. Hello, 大家好，欢迎回到我们西平方的节目 NG 英文。我是 Angela. We have a great episode for you today with a reporter from Taiwan News, Chris Chang. 是的，今天我们很幸运的邀请到了在台湾英文新闻发光发热的 Chris Chang 来到 NG 英文，跟大家做一个身为英文新闻工作者的分享。同时呢，也聊聊他一路走来学英文的心路历程。But before we get to the interview with Chris and I, Angela is going to help us break down some words that relate to Chris's passion of environmentalism. As Chris is very passionate about learning about how to protect our environment, we thought it would be a good episode to share some words about what it means to be an environmentalist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So take it away, Angela, here on NG Ingwen. 好的，没问题，张。谢谢你的介绍。那没有错。今天呢，我们要来分享几个跟全球气候变迁还有这个环保息息相关的单词，请大家赶快把你的 NG T sheet、你的 NG 英文专属笔记小抄准备好，我们要开始喽。那首先，待会在访谈中呢 ，Chris 会跟大家提到说啊，他自己其实本身除了是一个新闻工作者以外呢，也是一位 environmentalist， 这个环保主义者。巧的是呢，我们主持人 John 他其实也是一位货真价实、提倡环保的人哦。不管在海洋资源保护，还是主张环境保育的绿色活动，都有积极参与哦。这边海洋资源保护就是等一下 John 在访谈中会讲到的 ocean conservation。好，那绿色活动呢，就是 green movement。那既然提到了环保，我们又生长在这个环保意识抬头年代，当然也要来学几个跟这方面相关的英文喽。毕竟这也是全球的事情嘛，这个所谓国际化是不是？<笑>来看这个字 ，environment，environment， environment, 这意思呢是环境，不管是自然环境也好，周遭环境也罢，你都可以用它来表示哦。那如果给这个字 environment 后面加一个这个 a l。变成 environmental， 那意思呢就变成是有关环境或是自然环境的。像环境问题可以说 environmental issues， 环境保护 environmental protection。那如果再继续在这个尾巴加上一个 i s t， 变成 environmentalist， 就是刚刚前面提到像 Chris 这样子提倡环保的人。再来是等等这样会用到的字 conservation。它有善用、节约的意思，像 water conservation 就是节约用水 ，energy conservation 节约用电等等，或者呢是一般大自然里面这个森林保护区、自然保护区，我们可以用 forest conservation 来表达。不过另外有一个跟这个 conservation 很像的是 preservation， 它们两个啊其实都有保护、保护学意思。但是啊，这个动词形态 conserve 和 preserve 就有点不太一样，有保护程度上的差别哦。像例如这个 conserve， 它就可能比较像是在要好好运用，不要浪费。好，那 preserve 就比较像是要尽量把那个区块呢特别去保护、去维护、保存起来，不去干扰的意思。那这样子大家就有比较了解了吗？希望刚才讲的这些呢，对你的英文学习之路有所帮助哦。如果有漏掉、没有听到或是写下来的，也不用担心，可以上我们的 YouTube 频道，随时要听几次就要听几次。有什么问题的话呢，也欢迎在底下留言，让我们知道哦。那如果大家都已经准备好的话，我们就赶快进入今天的访谈内容，听听 Chris 的分享吧。All right, all right, all right. As always, thank you, Miss Angela Ma, for that wonderful NG Ingwen breakdown. My guest today on the show is a Taiwanese reporter and journalist for Taiwan News. He is a lover of environmentalism, world news, politics, traveling the world, continuous learning, and so much more. So, everyone, please welcome my good friend Chris. High five! <laughs> High five! What's up, Chris? Welcome to NG Ingwen. Hello,、uh, hello, everyone. My name is Chris. And、um, I'm a journalist. Yeah, you are a journalist, and so super interesting time to be a journalist. I guess always a super interesting time to be a journalist. But can you share actually how we met? We met through a company you worked for as a journalist. So can you share about that? 访谈开始 ，Chris 跟我们来了一段自我介绍。他呢，其实是台湾 News 这个台湾英文新闻的记者。
也就是等等大家要听到他说的这个字 journalist journalist。而且呢，他除了报道新闻、写新闻以外，也是公司的影片制作人 （video producer）。那另外，待会 Chris 还会用到一个片语，大家可以先认识一下。In terms of traffic， 好，这个 in terms of 就是就什么什么而言，以什么什么方面来看的意思。那这个 traffic 在这边不是指马路上那些交通车流量哦，而是网站流量 （web traffic）。好，所以 Chris 在表达的意思呢，就是说，就他们的网站流量而言，就他们的网站流量来讲的话，好，他说以他们台湾新闻网站的流量来讲的话，算是全台最大的英语新闻网。不过话说回来，他跟我们主持人 John 是怎么认识的呢？原来啊，新闻他之前在美国有跟一间做儿童教育音频节目、儿童 Podcast 的这个公司接触，觉得蛮不错的，就找了一下台湾也在做这种音频节目的公司。没想到呢，就找到我们 Angie 英文跟 John 联络上，还来上了我们节目。赶快来听听吧。Right, so I'm a journalist. I'm the writer and the video producer for Taiwan News. We are,、um, in terms of traffic, we're the biggest、uh, English-based news、uh, website. And、um, I met, first met John, I think it's this year, at the beginning of this year. At that time, I just came back from、uh, the U.S. and I'm current. I'm working on an article talking about educational show because when I was in U.S., I went to a media company and they produce a kids show. The the show talks about、um, kind of teach children about actually everything languages or the science or literature, and I kind of wonder if Taiwan also have the same kind of same education program that help people to learn English better, right? So that is why I found NG English, and then I contact I contact John, and we have our first conversation. Yeah, nicely said. So kind of yeah to sum that up, you were actually in America. Kind of researching podcasts about education, is that right? 接下来 ，Chris 会提到说啊，他之前呢其实就很常在听 podcast， 在听这个音频节目。那有一次呢，在这个搜寻的过程中啊，就意外发现了上段访谈中我们提到的这个儿童教育节目。他就觉得说，哎，很棒，很适合我们这些学英文的人听。因为毕竟是做给小朋友听的，用字遣词都相对简单，让学英文的我们也比较容易听懂。赶快来听听这段内容吧。It is because、um, actually the the thing is, when I was still in Taiwan,、um, I started to listen to this podcast because I'm actually the podcast listener, so I listen to all kinds of podcasts. So I first found this show is I just type science podcast on my Spotify, and this kids show just popping up. And because it's kids show, so、um, the language they use is very plain and very easy for、um, foreigner to understand, right? So, and I kind of figure out, oh, this. Company that produced this show is kind of in my destination of my U.S. trip at that time, which is Minnesota,、uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. So I contact that company and we may set up interview and I talk to the show host. Yeah, super cool. And then to kind of bring that full circle to complete that story, yeah, you you stumbled upon Ng Ingwen here in Taipei, and yeah, that's how you met and we got to do an interview together, and now. Even more full circle, you get to be on the show as a guest. I'm super excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, as you know, the heart of this show is actually to showcase your incredible language abilities. So before we get into all of that, I still want to kind of know a little bit more about what it's like to be a journalist. So can you share what is your primary role with Taiwan News? 如果平常就在读英文新闻，尤其呢又特别是这个台湾英文新闻的忠实读者的话，不知道你有没有在好奇说，哎，那 Chris 他在公司的这个 primary role， 他的主要角色是什么嘞 ？Chris 说他主要呢是撰写新闻稿，主题大多都是写跟这个东亚这边的政治活动有关，像前阵子香港的这个抗议游行啦，或是中国共产党这个 Communist Party 的一些新闻报道等等。不过除了这些以外，因为他个人也是一位这个 environmentalist， 一位主张环保的人，所以也有在写一些跟环境保护相关的文章。希望透过这样子的方式呢，可以让更多人认识环保的重要性。而且啊，他还有另外拍一些影片来帮助大家了解这个议题哦。So basically, I am a writer、um, in Taiwan News, and my the, the topics I cover majorly on、um, focus on the geopolitics in East Asia. 
for example, recently the the protests that happened in Hong Kong, which is pretty timely, and also cover、uh, some updates about the Chinese Communist Party. But I also have some my own reports about environmental issue because, well, I call myself a environmentalist, so <laughs> I try to、um, write more and let people be more concerned about the topics around environment. So yeah, that is basically I try to do this in the way of、uh, article, journalistic articles, but I also try to use、um, like the video journalism to help people to understand these topics better. Yeah, I I love all that. Very sensitive and and impactful topics to be working on. And I didn't know you considered yourself an environmentalist. I love that. I don't know if you know about me too, but I really do a lot of work here in Taiwan with ocean conservation and green movements. So we're gonna have to talk more about this because I I love all that. Thinking though about kind of your day to day life though as a journalist. What's the expectation of a journalist in Taiwan news? Are you supposed to write one story a day or one story a week? How does it work? 节目进行到这边，相信大家可能都跟我一样在想说，哎，那像他这样子，在这个台湾英文新闻当记者，一天都要写几篇报道嘞。Chris 说，他们公司的人力没有像一般台湾其他新闻媒体一样，有很多的人去写报道。但是每个人呢都有专门负责的主题。那如果有人想要再另外写一些其他这个可能地方新闻，也都很欢迎。或者有时候也会引用一些我们的中文新闻，然后可能以这个英文的方式呢去呈现，让台湾在地新闻可以更加国际化。所以这样子算一算的话，每个人一天大概也都是要写至少一篇报道，或最多可能写到两三篇，其实也都有。那这里等一下大家会听到一个片语用法 ，at best。它是顶多最多的意思。赶快来听听这段内容吧。Because we um actually we concerning the um manpower, we don't have too、uh, many journalists like some local um news media, but we do have people do cover different topics. And some people, if they want to um have do some individual original reports, our house is pretty kind of encouraged. All the journalists to do their own stories, but we also sometimes will quote the news sources from local media and try to、uh, make those local news become more global by using the Eng- by using the languages that is English for people to understand better, right? So basically, you no know, following those schedules, pre- everybody pretty much have to come up with at least one article per day. But at best, you can have two or three. That will also be great. But that really depends on how you have done. You are reporting and、uh, collecting your information. Yeah, wow, one article per day, but yeah, maybe up to two to three, depending on how how relevant your topics are to the daily news. But I think that's super cool, man, and it's fascinating. You know, you are a local Taiwanese, and you are writing and corresponding all in English. So super incredible work, man. I'm very proud of you. You mentioned a little bit before about kind of a passion of. You know, environmental awareness and and conservation. So, is there anything you want to be doing more to kind of focus on those goals? 大家还记得我们在前面有提到说 ，Chris 他其实是很提倡环保的吗？接下来在这段访谈中呢，我们要来问问他，在未来有没有特别想要在环保这方面完成的目标呢？他说，希望可以透过拍摄更多影片来探讨全球气候变迁 （climate change） 的议题。像目前，他就采访中研院的一些生物学家跟研究人员，了解他们在这领域负责的部分，然后跟眼前我们面对的这个气候议题做连接。那除了从这些比较专业的角度切入以外 ，Chris 他也打算走上街头，实际去采访民众，了解我们台湾人民对于气候变迁的看法。如果听众朋友在路上有遇到 Chris 在做采访，希望你别害羞上镜头，勇敢发表自己的想法哦。这边有个小提醒分享给大家。等一下听到的这个 Academia Sinica 其实是拉丁文哦，它指的就是我们的中研院。嗯、mm, ，for I think for the second half twenty twenty, I will majorly um focus on kind of explore what I can do in the video journalism, right? And actually, I plan to using this summer to tackle more issues about、uh, the climate change. Um, I have interviewed some biologists and researchers from Academia Sinica, which is 中研院 and um. I try to understand what those researchers, what they do in their field, and try to connect this field to the climate change issues. And also, I think I will go down street to have some street interview with my colleagues. We want to know what 
Chinese people think about climate change issues and what they can do to uh, make a difference, or what they what things they do in their life they think is good for environment, right? I think during the summer, if anyone see maybe see us, me and my colleague on the street, just don't be afraid to answer our question. And we want really want to know what everyone knows about climate change issues and what we can make difference. Yeah, I, I love that. Yeah, don't be afraid to to share your thoughts. But yeah, you know, what can we do to make a difference with climate change? And kind of actually, what is everyone's base level of knowledge about that? You know, a lot of it's a controversial topic right now. You know, like oh, climate change is real; it's fake. I mean, being from America, this is nonsense. I hear, but regardless, it's what can we do to you know make a better planet and leave it potentially intact for our future generations. So I love that you are you're focused on this and you can bring it into journalism and so much more. So well, well done. So if you don't mind, though, can we shift a little bit now to your language journey? So I'm so curious, you know, what is a day in the life of Chris at Taiwan News with your Mandarin and your English? 不知道各位听众朋友有没有认识在新闻媒体工作，像 Chris 这样的英语新闻工作者呢？我个人是没有，这样好像也没有。所以，我们对 Chris 真的很好奇，有太多问题想要问他了。其中一个呢，就是他一整天在公司的行程。Chris 说，他一早九点进办公室，就是开始写新闻，要开始读各个中文新闻、英文新闻，找出适合的新闻素材来写。接着呢，就要开始跟编辑开会讨论，决定这样子的主题是不是值得去写一篇报道，或是说可能可以以什么样的角度去切入等等。那在一切都完成之后呢，就是开始要去 gather information， 要搜集资料，写出一篇英文报道。那在写完之后呢，要再给外籍编辑审查，毕竟他们的母语是英文，可以帮忙修饰句子，让文章呢更流畅、更到底。在这些步骤都完成之后，才会把新闻刊登出来。Usually, I arrive at my office around nine, and I will start to browse in all kind of news in Chinese or in English, and try to find a interesting topic that I would like to、uh, kind of report on for that day. After that, we'll start to kind of have a conversation with my editor and to see if this、um, this topic is worth of reporting and what kind of angles we can provide、uh, beyond the resources or information that we already have, right? And、um, after that, just kind of dive into the information gathering process and、uh, start to write paragraph after paragraph and try to put everything together. Yeah, and putting that all together in English. In English. Yeah. So, is your editor a foreigner? Or is he Taiwanese local? Our editors, they have、um, some of them knows Chinese, but some of them don't. But usually, after、um, we finish our articles, we will let our foreign editor check because they are native speakers, so they know how to write more、um, naturally and、um, concisely in an, in another sense. So, we will let the article to be reviewed by our foreign editors and before we publish it. Yeah, very very interesting. So, what kind of inspired you to begin learning English? What was the process for that? 接着我们要请 Chris 分享当初是什么启发他学英文的兴趣嘞 ？What inspired him to learn English? 他说一开始接触到英文是小时候爸爸妈妈上班很忙，所以都会把他送去保姆家。那在保姆家呢，常常就会有一些英文书可以读，或是学一些字母的发音等等。后来上学之后，就跟很多台湾学生一样，开始上英文课、上补习班，一直到大学才慢慢结束。When I was pretty young, I think the real time I began to start learning English is when I was five or six, because my my parents was quite or quite busy at work at that time. So they basically threw my brothers and I to the children care centers. But it's not, actually not a center; it's just like we went to our nanny's house with other children, and I started picking up some English books. And start to read it and learn how to pronounce those alphabet A B C D F G and、uh, but actually I think my journey is quite follow the same as other Taiwanese students. I start to taking courses in the English cram school throughout my school years until I was in college. Yeah, and I think you know that is a the typical path that a lot of Taiwanese have. But you grew. So much with it for certain ways. So maybe can you share some tips and advice with our audience about you know what actually got you from just being a student of English to a lover and now a worker in English. 在这段访谈中 ，Chris 要跟大家分享一些小 paper。其中他提到很重要一点是 
我们永远要记得，不管是学英文也好，学其他语言，或是学任何事情，一定要找到值得让你付出的原因。但这不是说哦，是为了要考试要拿高分，而是像可能是为了要工作啦，为了要认识来自世界各地的新朋友，或是只是纯粹因为想要更了解喜欢的电影等等。像他个人呢，就是大学的时候知道说要把英文学好，才有办法认识其他国家的人，所以就靠着这股动力，决定要好好把英文学起来。Hmm, I think we are going through the tips. I would just say that the most important things when we try to learn not just English but everything is that you have to find a reason to do so. Right? It's not about passing exams or not about uh get a high score. High score. It's actually you have to find a reason to do so. No matter is. You learn you learning English for work or for meeting new people or just try to、um, learn learn better about the movie you like. That can all be the reason, right? So, but you definitely have to find a reason to do so. Like for me, I think when I was in college, I just feel that I want to know more people and I want to talk to different peoples from different worlds. So I need a language that allows me to do so, and that is why I finally decided that I should improve my English no matter. Is anyone is pushing me to do so? Because I think before college, most students in Taiwan they generally learn English because they have to pass the test and not make everything become super boring. So that is why I, the, the advice I can get I can give is that we should all find a reason to、uh, learn the language and why we should do so. Yeah, I, I love that. Yeah, you know, you said it so wonderfully. Find a reason. Yeah, and obviously you will be pushed as a student to get high grades or pass your TOEIC test to get into a university or maybe even into a job. But when that motivation is gone, what is the motivation you have yourself? And I think you did a great job. You know, you wanted to communicate with people. You wanted to be listening to music and reading and writing and and traveling, and you did a great job. So I love that. But that reminds me of a question I'd love to ask here on NG Yingwen, and that is thinking back to maybe when you were beginning or now as you work every day in Mandarin and in English. Can you share any kind of funny stories or maybe funny direct translations that you maybe made mistakes on over the years? 紧接着，我们要来听 Chris 分享他曾经陷入的一个翻译窘境。不过在这之前呢、啊，有个字我想要先跟各位介绍一下。待会大家要听到 Chris 说 “fluid”， 好 ，“fluid”， 它本来呢意思是一体或是这个流质非固体的东西，但是它也可以用来形容某个事物很流畅或是不固定。所以这边 Chris 说，语言是 “fluid”， 意思呢就是说语言呐、啊，它是活的，是可以变来变去的。可以有不同的描述方式去形容一件事情，像有一次 Chris 他就想要把反省翻译成英文，但是想了老半天都没有一个适合字可以去 convey 去传达反省的意思，反而是要改成用一句话 think about what you did wrong 来阐述反省的真谛。他说，之前本来有想过说用 introspection 这个字来表达反省，但后来发现其实，哎，也没有办法完全的去把它意思表达出来，反而是比较像一种反思。哎，只能说中文的美妙，真的只有懂中文的人才知道。Well, because of when I I feel that when I speak, I made all kinds of stupid mistakes in English, but well, but actually, I feel that language is not really strict. It's kind of It has had its fluidity, so it's not that it's not one or zero. So sometimes when I because I basically done the translation every day, right? So sometimes a translation from English to Chinese and vice versa. I found that、um, sometimes because I feel that Chinese is very、um, is a language that with is a language that with a lot of kind of nuance, and we like to use ambiguous words, especially when we write news articles. So. For, I remember last time when I tried to translate a word from Chinese that is fan xin. Fan xin is basically means that the process you talk to yourself and think about what you did wrong, right? So it's really hard to for me to find a word that is short and clear to in English to talk about fan xin because, for example, John, your mom might say, John, go back your room to think about what you did wrong. It's kind of like very long process, long sentence, right? But in Chinese, we just say. 去你的房间反省。Yeah, so it's kind of <laughs> it's hard for me to really find a good way to translate this kind of concept in Chinese to English, right? I'm so curious. Did you ever find a a suitable word or phrase for 反省 I finally use a word, but my editor said it doesn't work. I use introspection. Oh, okay. But 
I think kind of like a deep word, right? Yeah, super deep. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> Pred- predict some introspection, but <laughs> still, I think that doesn't really convey what I really want to say. So basically, finally changed the way I want to phrase that sentence. <laughs> yeah, and I'm imagining you're having to deal with that every day. So. I, I really think you probably have so many wonderful stories. Unfortunately, we are coming to our last question here on NG Ingwen, and that is: if you could go back to a younger Chris, would there be any advice you give yourself about language or life? 最后 ，Chris 他有没有什么话想要跟以前的自己说呢？他说希望小 Chris 可以更勇敢一点，去争取自己想要的，要跨出 comfort zone， 跨出你的舒适圈，思考自己未来自己人生要什么，然后努力想办法去达成目标。另外，他有提到说要小 Chris 离开他的 cocoon， 要破蛹而出，多跟来自其他国家、其他文化背景的人交流，会让自己获益良多。那这边 John 就提到说，像刚才这段 Chris 给自己小时候的建议，就比较像是刚才前面提到的 introspection， 比较在反思。赶快来听听访谈最后这段内容吧。The only advice I will I will get is I would talk to him maybe to be. More brave, braver on what he wants, and try to、uh, kind of get out of his comfort zone. Because and I feel that many young kids in Taiwan they are not really encouraged to think about what they want to do in the future, right? But I think that is actually the most important thing that young adults should do. They should think about what they want to do in their life and how to achieve that, right? So I will just、uh, maybe encourage my young self to kind of. Reach out to people who speak different languages and different different backgrounds, and、uh, try to kind of get out his cocoon. So, I think that he will benefit more <laughs> in that way. I love that man. That's that's very introspective, as we would actually say in English, right I, here. You I know? feel that I come talking <laughs> in a very serious way throughout <laughs> this episode. Yeah, your your business. I like it though. I like it. You know, it's 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 good. It it actually shows how much you care about what you do and and your journey for life. So I'm actually a fun guy. <laughs> <laughs> You're a fun guy. Yeah, don't worry, everyone listening here on NG Ingwen. Chris is a very fun guy, full of jokes and love and laughter. But、um, you shared a lot, and I think you know, being a news editor requires kind of that serious attitude about you know current politics, environmental changes, and and things like that. So I'm sure you do have a beautiful balance between your your fun side and your serious side, but. Yeah, I think it's okay to to talk about business like this today. So very well done. Where can people find maybe kind of your digital content that you're creating and more articles about your work on Taiwan News? Yeah,、um, basically, if you want to check about、uh, check out the latest news about Taiwan, you can simply、uh, type Taiwan News in your Google research, and we will be in your first result. And we also have a.、Uh, Our account on social media like Facebook, Twitter, as well as YouTube, so you can find all kinds of interesting about Taiwan、um, from those resources. So, if anyone specifically want to read my article, you can go to wherever article I write, and you can see the subtitle that will、uh, you can click that will be like、uh, Chris Chan. That is the name I use on my article. You can just click Chris Chan, and you can see. All the archives of my previous articles. Yeah, hope you like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you can find our article that you wrote about podcasts and educational podcasts. So, all right, Chris. Well, thank you for joining us today here on NG Ingwen. It's been a pleasure, and we'll talk to you next time. Thanks for having me, and everyone have a nice day. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Peace. All right. Well, that is our NG Ingwen show for today. We hope everyone enjoyed listening to that. You can connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. You can search NG Ingwen, or you can search on IG NG English I C R T. And don't forget to tune in every Wednesday morning from six thirty to seven, and Wednesday night from nine to nine thirty. We'll catch you on the next episode. Bye bye. 好，那我们今天西平方的节目 NG 英文就到这边告一段落啦。感谢大家的收听。别忘了到 IG 搜寻我们的粉丝专业 NG 底线 English 在底线 I C R T， 大家也要记得每周三早上六点半到七点，或是晚上九点到九点半，把广播调到 I C R T F M 一百，准时收听我们节目哦。那也欢迎各位上网搜寻西平方的公器不备课程，或者呢是到我们西平方的官网，多读读一些有关 NG 英文的文章，看看有哪些是可以吸收学起来的小配播哦。我们下周见了，拜拜。